welcome, 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 welcome. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I am your host, Crystal Jordan, and this is, of course, From Crystal with Love. Now, we're talking about reality shows, we're talking about relationships, love, dating, and all the things that go into that. But before we get into today's episode, I want you to go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe, 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 and share. Share with your friends so we can get this conversation going so you guys can come back and we can keep the momentum going, right? Last week, we talked about J-Lo and A-Rod. Now, reports came out, the couple, the star couple that had been engaged for the last two years, postponed the wedding because of COVID, decided that they're going to give their relationship another chance. I really want them to give it another chance. I definitely think that there's trouble in paradise. We heard that there was a, a, a significant other on A-Rod's side or something, some mess happening on A-Rod's side and Jennifer wasn't having it. But hopefully they'll be able to piece it together. Hopefully it wasn't too bad because, I mean, they look so good together. I can't imagine anyone looking better with Jennifer Lopez. Not just what looks good doesn't mean it is good. I'm just saying from my standpoint, I would like to see them stay together because they do look so good together. Now, we also talked about Derek Jackson, right? My relationship rhetoric was with Derek Jackson. Derek Jackson is someone that has been talking about women and giving them advice in their relationships for years. While women love Derek Jackson, men do not. Men are constantly angry because he's either giving out game, uh, you know, shitting on guys that are not doing this the right thing, telling all the secrets, and guys don't like him. But Derek Jackson, some reports came out after, um, I guess, last week that he actually was caught cheating on his wife. First of all, we didn't even know Derek Jackson was married. That is not publicized on his page. And I suspect most of his female viewers like him because not only does Derek give great advice, he's easy on the eyes. You know, we're not going to lie and say he's not easy on the eyes. But anyway, when the reports came out that he was cheating on his wife, which again, the wife that we didn't know about. Um, it, it appears this information is old, but my thing is this, it doesn't matter if Derek was cheating on his wife or not. I guess he admitted or he copped to it or whatever from years ago. But the point is it doesn't even matter because if his, if his advice is true, then it's true regardless of his actions. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? That happens with pastors all the time. Pastor John Gray has been caught cheating on his wife numerous times. That does not mean that the sermon that he may have delivered might not have been true. Just because a person gets caught up and their actions aren't aligning with their words, that doesn't mean that their words are not really true. Most of us give better advice than we take. So while all the guys that were really happy about Derek getting caught cheating, I actually saw a guy that said, you guys that supported him deserve to be cheated on. What the what? <laughs> that makes no sense. Just because someone is telling the truth does not mean that they're going to live by that truth. And it doesn't mean that that truth is no longer real just because they get caught doing something. So let's, 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 let's change that behavior. Okay. Let's change that thought process. Just because a person gets caught cheating does not mean that everything they said before they got caught cheating is no longer true. It just means that we don't need to follow their, their lifestyle. We need to listen to things they do. What did your grandmother say? Uh, keep the meat and throw back the bones. We're going to throw back those bones. We don't need that. But some of the stuff that Derek Jackson says is true. Is some of the stuff that he says pandering? I'm certain. But what really panders to the women more than what he says is all those muscles. That's what the women are looking at. <laughs> but anyway, I just want you guys to know just because Derek Jackson may or may not have gotten caught cheating, I said what I said. He was right. Moving on. Last week, we had A-Rod and J-Lo. We had Prince Harry and, and, and Megan. This week, we have hip-hop royalty, Sweetie and Quavo. Internet gone crazy. Black Twitter going in. Sweetie has a statement. She says that she is single. She says, I'm single. I've endured so much betrayal and hurt behind the scenes for a false narrative to be circulating that degrades my character. Presence don't band-aid scars. And the love isn't real when the intimacy is given to other women. Can we say that again for the people in the back? <laughs> again, I'll just read that last part because I, I want y'all to catch this. Love isn't real when the intimacy is given to other women. News flash for all the men out there that think that if they give their girl gifts, they give her presents, they give her cars, they give her bags. She doesn't care about them cheating. That is not the truth. 
That is not the truth. It doesn't make up for it. Yes, it may placate her. It may put a fake bandaid, but it doesn't heal the scar. It doesn't, it doesn't make it, it does not take away the pain. So Sweetie said that. And then of course, Quavo came back and clapped back. But one of the things that he said, he acknowledged that he did her wrong and that he hurt her. But he also said that she wasn't the woman that he thought she was. I don't know what that means. I think it's just a guy's way of trying to like throw a little salt at you because he got caught. Men are very good. Actually, let me not say that. Let me, let me just rewind. Let me rewind. People who get caught cheating are really good at flipping it on the other person. I've seen women go to crocodile tears immediately after getting caught cheating. That is just a tactic of cheaters, right? So Quavo said, oh, you're not the woman I thought you were, but I did hurt you. All right, cool. Sweetie said, take care. I love that. While everybody said that future, <laughs> Quavo was taking future's advice. Sweetie actually is the one that came back with the future like response with take care. I love that. Another comment from Twitter was from the Duke of Biden. And he said, weeks ago, Quavo gifted Sweetie a Bentley. Now they're no longer together. Team, break up with your man if he doesn't treat you like Quavo treats Sweetie has gone AWOL. I think that actually was a hashtag. Break up with your man if he doesn't treat you like Sweetie. And this was all because of the Bentley and the lavish gifts that actually both Sweetie and Quavo heaped upon each other because they both have more money than most Americans, right? He also goes on to say, it's a pity that this generation sees material gifts as a love language instead of the actual affection, true love, and loyalty. I agree with the Duke of Ibadan. Um, I think that we have to remember all that stuff is great. It looks great. It probably is great. I've never been gifted a Bentley. I'm sure I would really enjoy that. But as we see with Sweetie, it really doesn't stop her from being hurt. She mentioned that she's gone through hurt over and over again. And those gifts, while it was great for likes and great for, you know, trending uh, things on Instagram, it didn't make her feel better. So I think that that's a, a lesson to women out there that are looking for a guy. I know Sweetie's one of the girls that has really been promoting that. I can teach you how to get a six figure. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting, might've been a seven figure actually. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but remember what goes into that. And also realize that's not going to keep you happy. If you don't have true love and affection and a real commitment, all those material things are not going to keep you happy for the long term. This brings me to um, an Instagram post I saw that I really enjoyed and I wanted to share with you guys. It is by Peniel Anshil, and she is an artist, this Nigerian-born artist. She has an Instagram page where she does um, these great sketchings of African-Americans and African people. And she actually has a video that is a, it's a collection of a few different uh, sketches that attacks this whole hypocrisy of the social media relationships, the couple's goals, the relationship goals. And this is called Couples Ghouls. Check out this clip. That was couple ghouls as opposed to couple goals, which basically again shows that everything that's picture perfect is not perfect. If you saw one of the pictures, there was a girl with a black eye, she had been hit. And on one half of the picture, she's got the perfect beat. On the other half, you see that she's hiding actual physical scars from domestic abuse. There's another picture there of a guy and a girl together. And outside of the picture, he's actually connected to another woman. You just don't see that in the picture. And that third picture, you see the couple in Paris, France. They look like they're doing it big. Couples goals, relationship goals, all that. And attached to him is a mound of debt. So what he's doing for his girl, he really can't afford. And there's a lot of people in that situation. All these Birkin, who is buying, who can afford a Birkin bag? <laughs> Unless you are a rapper, a top level music CEO, and there are probably maybe three or four of them, a uh, top executive. I mean, who has money to spend thirty to $50,000 on a bag? That's just not realistic without going into serious debt. So all again, shouts out to Unchill. 
um, for those for those great images. And I think that's something for people to talk about and just think a little bit about. So let me know what you guys think about that. Couples ghouls as opposed to couples goals. And hopefully what you want in your life is something that's actually going to be long standing and it's going to actually feed you after Instagram is turned off. All right, guys. So, you know, if you guys know me at all, you know, Ready to Love is one of my favorite reality shows. I love the show because I think that it really captures or reflects the, the true dating scene that is out here right now. It's a very different dating scene than it was years ago, right? So you have couples, they're, you know, usually like in their 30s, their mid to late 30s, maybe 40s, and they've been through a little bit, they're working, they actually are professionals, and they're trying to find love or they're playing. It's real. It's actually what's happening on the dating scene. So the first three seasons of Ready to Love, I have interviewed and talked to most of the cast. Ready to Love is back April 2nd, Tommy is back. The season is going to be in Houston again. So this is back to back Houston seasons and they got a whole new crop of singles. I cannot wait to see what this season is going to bring. Now, remember last season, I don't know if you watched it. If you didn't, you may want to go DVR. Last season, there was a woman that was pregnant. She was five months pregnant while taping. There was several guys that had women pregnant off the show. So babies were on the way all across the board. There were people that weren't really ready to move on. There were people that weren't open and it just ended. I didn't really like the way the last season and I'm gonna be honest with you. I wasn't really good on the last season. I think that some of the people that really should have had a chance to find love didn't. And I think some of the ones that were playing got a chance to do it. But you know, that happens. That happens in real life, right? So check out this clip. This is the new season, the all new season of Ready to Love in Houston. Friday, April 2nd. This season, I'm bringing the heat to my hometown of Houston. Well, I'll be helping 20 eligible singles find something real. And there's more than a few surprises along the way. For the first time in Ready to Love history, <laughs> we're gonna find out if the lonely hearts of the Lone Star State <laughs> are truly ready to love. Okay, so I don't know what they could possibly be referring to I'm gonna have to get a ch get a chance to talk to Tommy. I have no idea what they could be thinking. They could be saying is going to be all new this season. Hopefully, they won't have these people at a resort again. We know it's not the same amount of COVID precautions there were last season, but I can only imagine what uh, tricks Will Packer and his team have up their sleeve for these singles. But we'll definitely be tuning in. Ready to love season four, and Houston is back. We'll be talking about that all season, so y'all get ready. So. I want to talk about Married to Millions. I have specifically stayed away from Married to Millions because of one of the couples that I'm probably going to have to talk about later, but I just, I just really can't. I, I just can't. This show is crazy to me because you have all these young people that are, you know, good looking for the most part and these older people who are not so good looking for the most part, but are very resourceful and they cannot understand why their relationship is not working. This clip that we're getting ready to show is of Bree and Bill. Now, I don't know if you guys watch the show or not. If not, you are missing out. It comes on right after Married at First Sight on Lifetime. So you definitely can, can check it out. Come back and let me know what you think. If you're not watching, you probably are if you watch Married at First Sight. So you'll know what I'm talking about. Bree is drop dead gorgeous. She's 21 years old, very close to her family. She's this Texas born natural beauty. She's Hispanic. She has like hair from a Pantene ad and she just, and she actually has her head on straight. I like Brie because it seems like she's really grounded. A lot of the girls, you can tell they're about that life. Brie seems like she's really, you know, she's well grounded. She has a great relationship with her mother and her father and her siblings. And then we come to Bill. Bill is in his 60s and he is just drop dead. <laughs> He's just drop dead. So this situation that we're about to look at is Bree having a conversation with Bill. She has struggled with his family, his ex-wife that he's still friends with. And everyone keeps saying that Bree is a gold digger. And pretty little Bree just cannot figure out why People think that she's not with Bill because she loves him. Let's check out this clip. 
I don't want to be looked at like some hoe that's here just to steal your money. I don't want it. I understand, and that's not fair. And I never wanted you to be in this position. I think that's out of bounds for Kathleen to be bringing that up. Bree's desire to have a baby are pure, innate feelings of Bree. Has nothing to do with financial gain on Bree's part at all. My life is complicated, and there's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of people, and everyone has their opinion of how I should handle my life. I can't be with you if this is what it's always going to be like. I love you, but they're in my life. I know. But you are too now. What if we just kept it the way it is right now, like Kathleen says? It was not fair to me. I can't sacrifice my own happiness either, baby. You wouldn't love me if I wasn't happy, and I'm starting to feel like it's taking a toll on me. Okay, so you guys see she's crying, she's serious, she wants to have a baby, but she doesn't want to take the money away from his other kids. You know, it's it's a whole mess. I don't know what's going to happen with Bree and Bill. I really like her. I think he's as genuine as a multimillionaire, 60-something-year-old with a 21-year-old can be. Um, and, you know, you can take what you want from that. But I think that this couple actually is probably one of the only couples on the show that that has a chance. However, I think that's something that people have to be aware of. If you are in a situation, that's one of the things that we don't think about. If you get with a guy that has a lot of money, you got to deal with the backlash of his family. You know, in all these songs where we're talking about getting money and taking, getting the bag and taking advantage of the guy, are you thinking about the fact that his mother probably isn't going to like you? His sister probably isn't going to like you. His exes and baby mamas are probably not going to like you. That all goes into this. There's nothing wrong with getting the bag if that's what you want. But just remember, there's a lot more that comes with that. I think Brie did not consider, and she's 21, so I wouldn't expect her to really have a have a, a an idea or a grasp of what the entire picture would look like. But the fact that Bill's ex-wives, his children, who are some of them are older than she is, are not really convinced that she's there for the love, it's not surprising. And that's one of the things that she's going to have to deal with. We'll see what happens. All right, on to another show full of shenanigans shenanigans i say <laughs> 90 day fiance is one of my guilty pleasures right so 90 day fiance you have you have people here in the states they go overseas to find love they have 90 days to get married or figure out if that's what they want they come back over here and that person can actually get a visa they can get married you guys know the spiel you watch the show now when 90 days don't work with that fiance 90 Day Fiance has branched out into a another series called 90 Day The Single Life. <laughs> In this clip, there's one of the stars of 90 Day Fiance, Big Ed. Now, Big Ed cannot understand after going to, I don't know if it was the Philippines, some Asian country with Rose, he wanted to romance her, bring her back and, and marry her here. Things didn't work out. Things went horrible. Big Ed went from taking a shower with her father outside to telling Rose he didn't like the fact that she had hair on her legs and then Rose dumping him and calling him an abuser when he moved back. So now Big Ed is ready to get back into the dating scene and he wants to make sure that this next time he's not put in the friend zone. Check out what happens when Big Ed is trying to figure out how he can get the affections of another young beautiful girl. Hello. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Oh my God. Good. I gotta go to the restroom. You gotta go to the restroom. You know where it's at? Yes. Don't forget your mask. Oh yeah. Sorry. Hey, you have a second? Oh my gosh, you just did my job. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> Normally it'd be you yelling. You have a second? Yeah, how are you? How's, how's your dinner? We haven't ate yet. No? Oh yeah. Which that's, I actually called you over to complain. I'm just kidding, no. Oh we my just, God. We had to wind the bread to bring in our lunch. Okay, so, oh, can you sit up? Oh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to sit. <laughs> okay, no. stand. Okay, anyways. No, so, hey. Um, Okay, so I think you're amazing. And uh, I want to ask you out on a date. So we can get to know each other. So we can get to know each other. Um. Okay, 
First of all, I want to say to Ed, Big Ed, if you're out there, in order to not be put in the friend zone, you have to start making better dating decisions. I have a rule of thumb when it comes to dating. First of all, you should date within your lane. That means you have about two points spread either way, right? So if you are a five, you could possibly go with a seven or a three, depending on what that package offer. Now, if you don't have those, if you don't, if that's not working in your favor, you need to have enough money or enough, you know, accoutrements to even out with the inconvenience of your attractiveness, right? So if you're not attractive, depending on the level of that unattractiveness, you need to be able to balance that out either with money or access or something that's going to replace that inconvenience. Does that make sense? Ed has not replaced the inconvenience. I'm sh everyone deserves love. I just think that Ed is constantly barking up the wrong trees. We'll see what happens with Big Ed and this new chick, but I have a feeling he's going to get friend zoned eventually, or he's going to get his heart broken yet again. This brings me to one of my favorite parts of the show, the dating questions. I love answering dating and relationship questions. I guess being an editor and writing and talking to people so much, I like to talk about relationships. Can you tell? So today's question is, Dear Crystal, my boyfriend and I have been together for over six months, but he refuses to post me on his social media, not Instagram, TikTok, or nothing. Why is he so secretive? All right. I think there are a couple of reasons that a guy could be secretive about his social media. Again, guy or girl, this is not gender specific, right? If a person doesn't want you on their social media, the first thing you need to do is look at their social media. Do they have a lot of pictures with their other friends? Do they have a lot of pictures with family or is their social media geared towards business? There are a lot of people that use their social media to promote their business. So if he's a photographer, does he have a lot of pictures of models that he works with or, you know, events that he, that he takes pictures at? If he is a insurance agent or a real estate agent, does he have pictures of property? Is his, is his, page generally driven by his work or is it driven by his personal? If it's driven by his personal and he won't post you, chances are there are other women that are looking at the page that he doesn't want to think that he's off the market, right? It's very simple. Anytime you see a guy who has a lot of other, he has family, has his kids, has his good guy friends, has his cousin, his mom, but you're not there, girl, it's a reason that you're not there because he doesn't want that, that picture won't get any likes. <laughs> he can't put you up there. And I don't think that you should put him on yours. To me, there are so many girls that will put the guy on their page. And it's like, this is my boo, 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 couple goals, relationship goals. And he's all on your page and you go to his page and it's like, wah, wah, wah. you're not there. Don't put him on your page. Make put pictures up of yourself looking absolutely amazing. And then when guys are posting, uh, you know, in your comments, let them see it. Forget that. I wouldn't break up over him not posting me on social media, but I definitely wouldn't put him on my page. And eventually, if you guys get to the next level and he still isn't posting you, you may want to pull him aside and have a conversation. That's just my advice. Remember, you can always email us here with your questions. Again, I love your questions when they come from our viewers, especially if you want to talk to me about something that we talked about on one of the shows, I love to hear from you. So make sure you email us at fromcrystalxo at gmail. Again, that's fromcrystalxo at gmail.com. And now it's time for relationship rhetoric. Relationship rhetoric, I'm excited today because it actually relates to what we just talked about with social media. I had the chance to actually have a conversation with Pastor Dwight. If you guys know who Pastor Dwight is, he is the pastor that officiated Chris and Paige's ceremony on Married at First Sight. Again, Pastor Dwight officiated the wedding of Chris and Paige on Married at First Sight. not feeling that, <laughs> but Pastor Dwight redeemed himself by giving Paige some really good advice about not settling for less. And we had the opportunity to talk to Pastor Dwight about if he thinks people should talk about their breakups on social media. Here's what Pastor Dwight had to say. Live in a tell it all generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first thing 
um, we do now is we 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 voice our frustrations on mm-hmm. social media, which is a major no no. Let me oh. tell you why. You, you you don't do that because you're letting people into your business really who don't care about what you're going through. Uh-huh. And so you're sharing your information that should be kept between you and the person that hurts you. Everything doesn't need to be public. Let me say this to some singles that might be listening who are in a relationship. When you are when you go through a breakup, don't post it on social media. Why? Because you might get back with them. <laughs> right. You, you <laughs> might want to go on another date with them in the future. So don't make yourself look crazy. Because your mind, you change. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, 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 we love to post on social media. So I, the first thing is I wouldn't have done that. Now, since she went public, he goes public. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. He makes a statement about what he did because she had she probably never gone public. I'm not saying what he did wasn't. I'm saying what he did was wrong. But they could have possibly handled this without the public knowing. Because when you posting pub, post things publicly, now you have the pressure the uh-huh. pressure of the public, people sending you messages and, hey, what are you guys? Are you guys still together? And so now you added a whole world into the your world. relationship. The whole world. right? And so now how are you going to announce to them we're back together? One of the major challenges I have with I, I've never met her, but one of the major challenges I had with um, Jennifer Lopez is we've always known about her through music and dance and movies. But we've also known publicly about every last one of her relationships. Now, she very well might be a wonderful woman in relationships. But the fact that we always see it on social media kind of sends bad signals. All right. I I actually agree with him. He gave really good advice. Aside from the fact that ladies are going crazy. And please, 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 ladies, understand Pastor Dwight is married. He's been married for upwards of 10 plus years. He's got beautiful children and a beautiful wife who is not trying to have no smoke with y'all. So please... Do not be in the comments talking about how fine Pastor Dwight is. Okay, that's a, he's he's off limits. He's married, but I agree with Pastor Dwight. If you are going to post your breakup, which a lot of people do, we just seen Sweetie, we seen J Lo, and well J Lo and A Rod didn't post it, but it got out. But if you're going to make a breakup public, make sure it's final because there's nothing more uncomfortable than posting and telling your friends how much you're over this person, you're done with him, you get back with him and then they're looking at you like, really girl? I have a girlfriend that did that. She would post about her guy and how great he was. Then she would post, I'm single, I'm over it. And then like two weeks later, they're back hugged up on Instagram and it's like, so you gonna just fill us in on that or we just not gonna ask no questions? (laughs) I agree with Pastor Dwight. Keep your breakups off social media, which is one of the reasons why the girl from earlier, that may be why the guy didn't want to post her. <laughs> Maybe he wants to make sure the relationship is locked solid before he posts. But in any case, to me, emotional outbursts don't belong on social media anyway. So kudos to Pastor Dwight. All right. Our clip du jour, or as some people would say, clip of the day, is a clip from Beyonce and Jay-Z at the Grammys. Now, for whatever people say about Beyonce and Jay-Z, I know there's, you know, Uh, people that think that they have a contract in place, people that think their marriage is a business, people that think they're really in love. I don't really know what it is and I really don't care. What I do know is I love the fact that they have presented a beautiful, strong black family that has withstood the test of time. Here's Beyonce and Jay-Z celebrating after, first of all, their baby blue won a Grammy. How beautiful is that? Beyonce broke the record of having more Grammys than anyone in history. And Jay-Z took a Grammy home himself as well. This is the Carters getting their TikTok synchronized dance challenge on. How cute was that? So cute to celebrate. And like I said, regardless of what you think about their relationship, they are definitely setting a standard. Kudos to Jay-Z and Beyonce. I'm a fan. And I think that true love always wins. I hope that they will definitely stay together and continue proving all the haters wrong. Today's love soundtrack of the week is one of my favorite songs. So it really is not like a current song. So I have no reason to actually bring it up, except that I think it needs to play at every single wedding of people that are actually getting married because they have a genuine love for each other. 
If you haven't heard it, you need to download today James Arthur's Say You Won't Let Go. Literally one of the top songs in my love song playlist. You got to check it out. I've enjoyed today's show. This has been so much fun. I hope you guys are enjoying hanging out with me as much as I'm enjoying doing this. Sweetie and, and, and Quavo, Lord Jesus, give me your comments on that. I wish Sweetie well. I, she's young. She's pretty. She's talented. She's going to be just fine. Hopefully Quavo will learn a lesson and he'll take his little bruised feelings off someplace and, and lick them and be fine and take that to someone else's life. But I think they'll both be fine. J-Lo and A-Rod, I hope they stay together. I hope they get back together. I hope they get married. And I hope that they finally found, J-Lo finally has the love that she's been seeking all these years. And moving on to Ready to Love, you guys, I'm going to be clued in every week, April 2nd. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to nephew Tommy and get some uh, tidbits for you guys so we can get a sneak peek on what's going to happen. But definitely we're going to have so many conversations right here on From Crystal With Love about Ready to Love. Trust and believe. Married to Millions, Brie and Bill, I don't know about long-term. Brie wants a baby at 21 years old. I wish she would wait, but she may want to secure the bag have that baby, have Bill until he finds, you know, another 21 year old. I just don't have a lot of hope and faith in that relationship, but I do think Brie is a sweetheart and I think she's going to learn a lot from this situation. Big Ed, again, you need to have as much money as the inconvenience of your unattractiveness demands, right? Everybody deserves love but you gotta know the formula. Just find a woman that loves you. Stop chasing these young, beautiful girls that don't want that. Come on, Ed. I know it's good for TV. All right, that brings me to our love quote of the day. Love quote, love quote of the day says, being deeply loved by someone gives you strength. Loving someone deeply gives you courage. Again, being deeply loved by someone gives you strength. Loving someone deeply gives you courage. And that's the show for today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and my crew here. As always, I want to wish you much love from everyone here at From Crystal With Love. We'll see you next week.